you're wondering how other people make their edits look extremely high quality whilst yours still look like they've been made on CapCut, then in this video I will show you exactly how to make your edits pop. And if you're wondering why you should listen to me, my name is Levin and I've been editing for over 3 years, gaining a total of 200,000 subscribers across all social media. And trust me, it's easy. First, we have to understand the 4 elements that will make our edit look good. We got footage, enhancing, color correcting and exporting. What's very important is that all 4 are connected. Meaning, if for example your footage looks bad, your color correction will also end up looking bad. But if your footage is good and you mess up the color correction, the edit will still look bad. To get good footage, I would suggest you to find an Instagram account or Discord server. There is plenty of them which upload high quality scene packs. Trust me, that will save you a lot of time. I'll leave you the one I use in the description. And no matter what, do not screen record your videos from YouTube. Step number two, enhancing. Some people call it topassing, but what it will do is scale up our clip and remove small imperfections using AI. First of all, we have to make sure we have all the clips we want to use in our edit ready. And also don't add any effects or text just yet. Make sure it's only the clips, then head to the top under composition position and click on add to render queue. Then click onto your output module and for the settings it's very important. Make sure the format is set to QuickTime. Then click onto the format options and put the video codec to Apple ProRes 422 HQ. That will just ensure some extra quality and once that's done we can set our output and then press on render. Depending on how long your edit is the rendering process might take a while. Next we have to open Topaz which is the program that we're gonna use to upscale our edit. You can also get that from the discord server. And now we have to import our footage so click onto the screen and select your edit. Once you click open Open, you will see a big preview for your edit. On the right side we will have all the settings and on the bottom we will have a small timeline. The most important thing for us in Topaz will be the filters and the only one we're going to use is called enhancement to enhance the look of our edit. So make sure you enable it by clicking on the button next to it and in here it's going to get a little bit complex. The video type we will leave as progressive, the AI model will stay pro toys but the parameters we're going to switch from auto to manual. What that does is it gives us all these different settings that we can change individually. Be aware that every footage is different so you might have to tweak these settings a little bit. Start by putting the revert compression from 0 to 60, then put the improved detail to 50. Next, we're going to put the sharpen to 20. And as you can see, most of these settings are very self explanatory. But if you want to have a detailed description of what every setting changes, you can just hover over the name and it will give you a short description. We're going to reduce our noise by 20, put the dehalo setting to 10, and lastly, crank the deblur all the way up to 100. We don't want to add any additional noise, that's why this value will stay at 0. And recover original detail, we will put from 20 to 60. Now we can compare our edit to what it looked like before so we're gonna go ahead and press on preview and as you can see it will now generate a preview which will take some time to load and once it's done we can see two different clips on the left side is going to be our original input and on the right side we're going to have our enhanced clip just by looking at it you're not going to notice a big difference but if you zoom in onto high contrast areas like the eyes for example you can see that there's a big difference to before and after and if you want to beat goofy CapCut editors you gotta use this before exporting and rendering our edit from Topaz we also want to change the settings within Topaz so scroll all the way down and then click on the output settings. Make sure we have video selected and then change the encoder from H.264 to ProRes. For the codec, choose 422 HQ and if you want your clips to have audio then you can use copy but in my case I don't want any audio so I'm gonna click on none. And lastly the container has to be MOV. If your PC is not that fast I would also disable the live preview right here. Then we can click on export as, give it our name and once we click on save it will start rendering. As I already said if you have a slower PC don't worry this might take a while but it's very necessary if you want your edits to have the best possible outcome. After Topaz is done exporting, we have to re-import our edit into After Effects. As you can see, I have two files. One is the upscaled version and one is the original one. Make sure you select the upscaled version and then drag it onto your timeline. Now you can start adding effects in your text and of course delete your original footage. But wait, if you want to take editing more serious, check out my new private community filled with hours worth of exclusive content updated daily, combined with private live calls every week. So if you want to become the best editor and meet like-minded people, click the second link in the description. Step number three, color correcting. Without a doubt, the most important thing, if you don't want to look like a goofy CapCut editor, will be a good color correction. Start by heading to the top, click on layer, then select new and click on adjustment layer. The adjustment layer will make sure to affect all the clips that are beneath it, which is pretty cool because that means we don't have to copy and paste the effects of our color correction onto every single clip. Though one very important thing when working with adjustment layers is that if you have a text on your clip, we need to put the adjustment layer below our text layer. As you can see, I have my beautiful text right here and now I'm going to drag my adjustment layer below this text layer. Otherwise it will look really really bad. Once we sorted out the timeline we're gonna click onto effects and presets and then search for the sharpen effect. Choose the normal one and drag it onto the adjustment layer and now put the sharpen amount from 0 to 60. And when making a color correction always make sure your resolution is put to full. The next effect we're gonna add is called BBC unsharp mask. Drag it underneath the sharpen effect and then put the radius from 1 to 25 and the amount from 
50 down to 50. Very important, do not go too high on this value because otherwise it will really, really mess up your footage. Last effect we need is called looks. So again, drag it onto your adjustment layer. And this time we have to click onto this button that says edit. Once we clicked on that, you will see that there's a whole new interface which looks nothing like After Effects. And don't worry, it's normal. This is part of the looks effect. And what we can do in here is add more effects that are optimized for color correcting. And to add one of these effects, we have to go down to this box with the plus inside of it, right below our big preview. And when we click on here, you will see our tools will open up. Like I said before, color correction is a very complex topic. You can see we have loads of effects in here, but because I don't want to waste your time, I'm going to show you my favorite ones, which we're going to start with spot exposure. So click on it. And now you can see it replace our box here. Click on it once again, and that will open up our controls in the right. We're going to put the stops from 0 to 0 0.5, which you can see will make the clip a bit brighter. And then you can see we have these two yellow circles on top of our preview. And what I like to do is just pull them a bit up so that our light is coming from the top. And then we can also drag this middle one a bit bigger. To add our next effect, we're going to go back to the bottom right where it says tools, hover over it, and then select the haze effect. Click on it once and start by putting the spillage from 50 down to 20%. The softness we'll put from 10 to 25%. And the same for the reach, so put it from 50 to 25. Lastly, we want to change the color of it and put it from brown to white. And to do that, we're going to click onto the center of this color wheel right here. The last effect we're going to add is called hue slash saturation. So select it right here and put the saturation from 100 up to 105%. As you can see, there's so many different effects that you can use. You just have to experiment what fits best with your clip. And once we're done here, we can click onto this check mark in the bottom right. And now all the changes will be applied to our normal After Effects preview. Creating your color correction can take hours if you want to do it right. And like I said in the beginning, if you mess something up, it can ruin your entire edit. So if you want to save yourself hours of stress and potential failure, make sure to click the first thing in the description because you can still get my exact color correction that I used to turn my edits from looking like this into looking like this. If you're an editor, it's a must have because you can just apply it with one click and start seeing success immediately. So click the first link and don't miss your opportunity. Limited time offer. And after we applied our high quality color correction, there's only one last thing we need to do to get our edit out of After Effects without losing any quality. Step four, <laughs> rendering. A lot of people actually overcomplicate the process of rendering, but it's by far the simplest out of all of these if you know how to. By far the best way of rendering is just using the normal Adobe Render Queue. So head to the top under composition and click add to render queue. Now for the output module, similar as earlier, we're going to click on it once, go to the format and select quick time. For the format options, make sure Apple ProRes 422 HQ is selected and the quality needs to be at 100. Press OK. Make sure the height and width are the same as your composition and then press OK. Lastly, give your edit a name by clicking onto the output and then click on render. As before, this process can take a while depending on how fast your PC works. One thing that helps is enabling your caps lock. That way After Effects won't preview your edit while rendering. If this tutorial helped you, make sure to smash the like button and check my private community via the second link in the description. Thank you for watching and see you next time.